yes, uh, I was reading through the articles and there's a lot of problems of people just wanting to do it uh, to get a new body instead of the actual goal of the surgery, which is to help people who have disorders that prevent them from having a working body. Um, so I definitely think in the society that we have today, it's going to become a cosmetic thing instead of a, you know, groundbreaking exactly. scientific help for people that, that don't have any other option. And then I feel like it might become a money issue as well. Uh, the surgery is going to be extremely expensive mm -hmm. if it works. Um, and so, and it's going to be not only expensive, it's going to be dangerous. So you have to have the money to be able to save yourself. Awesome. That was a tough question because the science side of me was like, this is so cool. Yeah. Um, this is huge for the medical field. It's something that, you know, people have dreamed of for so long. Mm -hmm. But there are so many things that can go wrong. Yeah. Um, fusing a spinal cord and I read about the monkeys and, and how it didn't work and the, the head was rejected. Like, to me, that's absolutely terrifying. Oh, yeah. Um, to think that, like, my head would be cut off and then it didn't just didn't work. Um, and then it comes to the question of, of what defines what a human is. Mm -hmm. You know, is the human just in the brain? Is the soul just in the brain or is it in the whole body? And it's like, God made us this way for a reason. So why... Why are we taking such big steps to, to change that? Uh, honestly, no. Um, the whole uh, fusing of the spinal cord and keeping somebody in a, uh, in a coma for a few weeks, you have to in order to, to make sure that they don't move. Mm -hmm. You have to move a person if they're in a coma. Um, because of bed sores and, and all the, you know, cleaning them and, and cleaning their bed sheets and uh, making sure infection doesn't happen. Uh, and one slip can cause all the work that you've done to be destroyed. Um, and also rejection. People get rejected organs all the time. So I think when it comes to the head, I think that's a little bit more. And then you're putting that person even more susceptible to the infection that you see all the time in hospitals. So I think there's just major things that can go wrong and if one little thing goes wrong, the whole thing is gonna fall apart. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, that's a big if, if it's successful. Uh, I, I, I don't know, a big doubter of whether this is gonna be successful or not. Um, but if it becomes routine, is that what you mean? If it becomes a daily procedure that's not too hard, uh, becoming a social problem. Yeah, man, there'd be chaos on the streets. There'd be people killing each other just for their bodies. Um, yeah, I could see, and also uh, stratification, I think, would happen between the haves and the have-nots. So I, I could see this, um, but I don't think this is going to be, uh, I would imagine the cost of something like this is, is going to prohibit any sort of um, mass production of human head transplants. Possibly. Awesome. Sure, I believe humans have a right. Um, You know, but the, the problem is, is, I think for me, at least depletion of resources uh, taken away from um, things that could be more beneficial to humanity. Um, you know, uh, the great promise in this, at least I think a byproduct of this would be uh, spinal cord repair. And that seems to be the problem they have using the spinal cord. I know they talk about um, plastics and things along those lines. But, you know, if we could, through this, if, you know, if we could learn more about uh, reconstructive spinal cord um, surgeries to help, uh, you know, and I'm always worried about those on the periphery or those on the margins. Uh, so in this case, like the poor uh, would be those who suffer from the spinal cord injuries. And I think that's where this technology, at least for me, is most beneficial to humanity. I feel like with a surgery sort of of this magnitude, you'll have a number of different groups probably very vocally sharing their opinions about it. I think you immediately get into ethical issues uh, in terms of medicine, and in terms of, of uh, strategies uh, within the field. I, I can't see how this wouldn't be more or less an explosive issue.
pretty much the gist of my first market period for the sci-fi fantasy course because we look at uh, Frankenstein. And within Frankenstein, that's exactly what we look at is, is what powers are appropriate for humans to fulfill, right? I'm personally torn on this because I think the tremendous strides that we make in technology and, and, and you know medicine and, and all these other fields, I think are remarkable, right? So I don't want to stifle that creativity, but I feel like there has to be some type of, of demarcation line, you know, some type of boundary that that we can't flirt with too much. We spend really about three cycles on Frankenstein. It's only a 160 page novel, but, but we, we really sort of give it its due attention. Um, during that time, we look at articles, we look at uh, genetic coding, right, genetic modification. Uh, we have discussions about that. We have uh, a pretty interesting discussion about there was a, an office in Sweden, I believe, either Sweden or Germany, and they were microchipping their employees, right? So we talked about the moral implications of something like that. Now that's, that's far less than a head transplant. But I think it, 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 it caters to some of those same ideas. You know, it's, it's this idea that it's, it's unnatural. It's okay, guys. Earlier in the week, I compiled a Google form with three questions on it. The person taking the form would only be answering two, though. The question wasn't too specific so that everyone who took the form and didn't know completely what I was asking could still answer honestly. You can see here, if it ever becomes possible, would you allow your head or someone else's head to be transplanted onto another younger, healthier body is broad and only has two answers. Each answer led to another set of questions with ethical answers. The last response in each question, however, allowed for a free response, as you can see here. Out of 112 responses, there was a very close gap between the two views. And it was quite a astonished that it has come so close. Originally, within the first day of responses, there were many more no I wouldn'ts than yeses. But we will explore the plethora of views in a moment. Here's a look at all the data. So here I have 112 responses total out of the many that I emailed the whole form to. So in the summary, the main point that I want to express here is that you have very, very close uh, views of these two, you know, pretty controversial, you know, questions. So out of the yeses, there's still less, but the noes do have very good reasons. So here are the questions, and this is how many, and then we'll go into the others once we go into the other page. So if you answered yes, then why? You have questions such as, I would like to have the option to be mobile again if I ever got into an accident with 13 votes. I would like to have a longer lifespan with seven. I would like to have a more cosmetically appealing body with only one. I would want this procedure to be done for a loved one who is suffering with a majority 29. And then you have other. And again, we'll explore those. The next one is, if you answered no, then why? I don't think the surgery will be successful with 10. I don't think it would be a worthy use of, of repairing spinal cords with only one. I don't think the right group of people are being reached that need the surgery. 10. I don't believe the demand will be as high as Dr. Canavero thinks. With nine and the other had a, of a huge majority. And some of these were actually very entertaining to read and insightful. So here we'll look at the responses. Now this was completely anonymous. So if we ha right off the bat, you have a huge amount of responses. And we're going to look at the responses that are different than the rest of them. So this first one right here. This just seems morally wrong. I'm Catholic, and this goes against my beliefs in life. God determines when you die, and having this transplant would further expand one's life, defying the Catholic religion. Now, this kind of speaks to my ethic of the 10 Catholic social teachings, where, you know, everyone's equal, you have human dignity, and all those sort of things. Um, this student or whoever took it, said he wouldn't. And I actually, personally, I agree, I agree with him. But to remain ambiguous, I did say yes at one point, and I took this as well. And this is the one that I chose. I said, yes, I would. And this is where my yeah, rule utilitarianism comes into play. I would want this procedure to be done for a loved one who is suffering. And I mean this in terms of it's for a greater cause. This would benefit someone else more than it would benefit me uh, God forbid anything happened to me later on that I am unaware of. Again, knock on wood. So here's another one that actually fascinated me. Someone said he wouldn't. Um, and this is actually a quite casual response. Life sucks and changing how long you are meant to live is unnatural. If I were in a tr tragic car accident, sucks for me. 
but it happens, so I have to live with it. There's no changing what happens to you. That kind of speaks more to, you know, are we changing God's image, if you were to look at it in a Catholic way. And um, I do enjoy kind of looking at it that way, that it, this is unnatural, um, and it goes against human beings and pushes the boundaries of science, and that fascinates me. And I like how a lot of the people that did say no did give their own ethics to it, and that also really helps the argument. Here's one, but this is a nice one. Two of these reasons, actually. I don't think it would be successful, and I think this type of surgery will be abused by those who do not actually require the surgery, like a CEO wanting to extend their lives. I don't think the surgery slash procedure will be used for its intended purpose. And that one is also very good. A new view that I haven't actually thought of myself. Uh, and we'll go over one more. This one I definitely know exactly who gave this one, and this one's from my grandfather. Each person is given a time on earth, and we are a speck of dust passing through time. It is what we do in that time that will live on, and the good we do for others. When your time comes, you must go to make room for the next generation. It's a part of the life cycle. This one is a bit confusing for me, only in the fact that I can't I directly identify the ethics, and this is kind of attributing to I what I imagine my grandfather's uh, immense wisdom. Um, he doesn't just allude to religion, but he does give it to a point of just basic human understanding and the fact that, you know, you don't want to be selfish with your time on earth. You literally want to share your um, experiences with other people and, you know, taking or extending your life really pushes the boundaries and is almost, you know, it's weird and strange and kind of scary. So I hope you enjoyed looking at some of this information.